Okay. I was about to say happy day. This, I mean, hopefully it's a happy day. The glasses really match the shirt. This is normal, like teal. I don't know, the color's a little off. But it's kind of nice. It looks like I'm matched. Um, but it just shows me that the color is that off on the computer. Anyway, it's good to see everybody. I'm thankful that you stayed around for this last episode of my summer adventure. If you're new here, this is Creatives Ignite, and I'm your host, Diane Gibbs. I almost messed up on my name. Ah, how can I do this? It's just been 10 years. Hmm. Anyway, I'm a little nervous and excited, I guess, to share my last bits with you. And I hope I got everything in there like I went through it, you know. Hmm. Well, let's just jump right in. What I realized that was so powerful, it was huge, huge thing to get over. I guess as a designer, I just want everything to be perfect. And what I realized is that when I'm learning something, I was really frustrated and really, really hard on myself. And I've already talked about that. And I've talked about it, all the messy stuff that I made, but I realized that I can actually learn a lot if I just keep iterating, making the same thing. So let's see if these things are in order. So I made some rocks. When, I, when in doubt, I make rocks and robots because who can say that's not a robot or who can say that's not a rock, you know? And then I would play with things like these rocks I didn't really care about. So I just put some colors on them and to see if I could make them. I don't think this looks great, but it's like, okay, well, this yellow on this brown paper, maybe maybe that works at times. This These are some that I made with a limited color palette. I think it was just two colors. And I just uh, used a little bit of white uh, marker or like this um, crayon -y thing on the top. Again, I'm able to try. I think I do best when I have a sketch. And so this is a really small little bit over here um, on the left. And then this was kind of first pass. And then this is me getting darker. This is like a Lyra. Um, and I have those in my bag too. So I can show you if you want to see, but it's a uh, graphite pencil, but it's all graphite. Like there's there, no wood on it. It's really chunky, but it's water soluble graphite. So all this, I got darker by just doing layers and layers of this graphite. And it made for this kind of watercolor look, which again, uh, it's, you can't mess up a rock, you know, maybe I can. I love to make things from things that have been discarded because it like gives a second purpose to something. And I'm like, well, it's already been used. So then anything that I find from it, I think is a win. So if you don't know, I absolutely love the inside envelopes. Did a book on it. I've done lots of 30-day projects with it. And I continue to do something. Now, this isn't something I made in the summer, but I did throw this one in here. So I made a bed, right? See the little, this is the sheets. And then this is the pillows, right? And I just darkened them a little bit. Little bitty things. That, but I love using folded paper or something like that. I just think it's really fun. Well, you have to know, and I've thought about this a lot in design or in illustration. How can I know I'm growing? Well, if I'm showing it every day to Mora, well, Mora can see that I'm growing because I, she sees how I'm going. But if I really want to get better, it's better if I iterate, if I just draw the same thing over and over. Now I've done this a bunch of different times um, in different things. And I didn't really put it together that this was like, oh, this is a thing. And I'm sure lots of people do it, but I want to be a better illustrator. But again, just to remind you, if you weren't here before the other two weeks, it I was afraid of making something ugly. I was afraid of wasting materials and I was afraid of wasting time. And like, I have tons of art materials, but I wasn't using it. I wasn't afraid so much of not using the materials, right? Them going dry or anything like that. I should have been because that definitely has happened. But I also was wasting, I think that I was wasting the skills and talents that God blessed me with. So if I can do this thing, not that I'm as amazing, but he gave me this insight or my imagination or whatever. And I didn't want to utilize it. It was bothering me less. It was bothering more to waste time or waste. Um, oh, if I make something bad, now I've wasted this watercolor. Now I don't think that way anymore. I think it was just me having to get through the process and just make a lot of things and make a lot of things that I would throw away because I realized that it's really about practicing. It's not about perfection. So I have started iterating and Mario tells me, 
Um, when I was doing Creatives Ignite the Camp the first year, he said, God called, I, I really had felt like God called me to make this. Um, and I just keep using this because it, I am using my skills and talents. I feel like God's given that to me. God's called me to use that. And Mario is just that reminder of God called me to be obedient, not successful or not perfect or not beautiful, right? He just wants me to do stuff. And these are all, I wonder, did I bring the wrong file? Anyway, I have done many 30-day projects and 100-day projects. If you, if any of this has been um, helpful to you or inspired you to do something, I would suggest doing something like this. And if you don't want to do 30 whole days of one thing or 100 days of one thing, then maybe during one day, you do 30 of these drawings or you do five of these drawings. And then you move to the next thing. That's one thing I found was really helpful in helping to work in different styles. So here's some things that I did and that I would suggest you do. And I am going to do a 30-day project in October with the blobs, which I'll show you some blobs in a minute. I think you just need to have, if you want to get better at something, no matter what it is, whether you want your legs to be stronger, you want rock hard abs. If you give it anywhere between 30 minutes and two hours a day for 30 days, you will have started to develop this habit and you will develop a system for yourself and you you will be able to see a difference in your rock hard abs, hopefully, right? But if for me, I want to get better as an illustrator, I was willing to give 20 to two, 30 minutes to two hours um, a day. And I was willing to do that for 30 days. And so I found other ways to incorporate it in, which were terrific to me. And then I really like giving myself restraints. I like to give, and I was talking to a student today earlier about just, you know, I said, what's connecting these things? So what restraints could you do? I really do like to have three constraints. One is a really odd one. It's always oddball. Like I did a series that had legs. It had to have somebody's legs in it. I mean, that's weird, but it's like a little Easter egg for people, you know, and they're always hunting for the egg or the inside of the envelope. It, they hunted. Now they were looking in the inside of their envelopes to see if I was using a pattern that they had uh, seen that day or, or something that they had seen. So one time I did digital collage and I did a limited color palette and then I had to have something odd in there. I've done regular physical things. And you'll see a lot of these just in what I've done. The third thing you need is a willingness to fail. Willingness. And I think when you're doing it every day, the first ones are really like precious a little bit. And then you're like, you kind of get in the habit because you're solving these things. You're like, oh, I could use that in this. Oh, I could use this in this. And then I think, so you have to be willing to fail and then you need some accountability. So for me, I really, really, really like having some people to do this with. And it doesn't have to be the internet, right? It just means posting daily could be between me, Mora, and Anna. That's it. That could be what it is. It could be that it is, that's, you really only need one person and you can just send a picture via text. I've done this plenty with my friend, Amy Hassenjager. I do something with Mora and my friend, John Ingalls. To me, it's just, and it, you know, there are certain times when we do it every day and there are certain times that I'm like, I can't do it. I haven't done it in two weeks. Oh my goodness. But then I like produce a whole bunch of things to catch up, you know, and I, hopefully they seem okay with me being like that. And I just think the accountability because they're still posting. And so there's that, I want to do it. I see what they're doing. They're inspiring me. It's not just like a coach where somebody's just holding me accountable but they're not doing it with me. Like when Maura posts something or when Amy posts something or when John posts something, I'm seeing something that I want to do too. And it's like, gets me excited. So I do think the accountability is really helpful, but it doesn't have to be on the internet. You just really need one person who will do it with you. And I found that that was really, really helpful. I think making crazy rules is terrific. It makes it more fun for me. So you need to think about what you could do that would be fun. So what, um, I think that unexpected things happen when you exercise your creativity or your imagination on a daily basis. You could say it's weekly, and I think that's probably it for me sometimes because some weeks I don't have a lot of time to do stuff. 
So remember, today is the day that I'm showing you some things I'm proud of, some things you're going to be like, you're proud of that? But I am because I now see it as parts of things that I can use. And it was just an idea. And I see the value in just the idea and at least getting the idea on paper where it was sort of flushed out. Now, when I iterate again, then I can make it better. But if I didn't ever, if I threw away the paper, or if I didn't make it ever, then I have nothing to go back to, even in your sketchbook, because I absolutely love sketchbooks. So let's talk about what's worked in the past for my sketchbook. Now, I tried to find all new things. I hope everything's in here. So I think for me, as an ADHer, ADH, no, that's ADHD, whatever. I know I'm hyperactive, clearly. And I haven't taken my medicine. This is what it's like. It's already worn off. But I do best about not being in my head if I'm distracted. I've said this before. I try to draw every night while we're watching TV, like the calm, the calming down or winding down kind of time. I definitely paint in front of my um, at my art table lots or draw there as well or cut things or do whatever. But sometimes just the action, just the practice stuff is just done on the couch, kind of in the dark. So we only have one light. I mean, not like we are poor. We only have one light, but there's no real places to plug in a light next to the place I sit. Anyway, so this was done. This is a tiny little sketchbook. And I mean, you could see my fingers like they're normal sized, but this was uh, the 16th of August. And it was, I mean, I'm just sketching really quickly and it's like on TV. So it's somebody's being interviewed or something and it's, you know, they're not, the lighting isn't always that great. I'm, I don't think he would be able to recognize himself. Right. But it's not, maybe that's not important. <laughs> I love this one because this is, I think somebody's going to look through my sketchbook one day. So I have these bedroom shoes and I'm sitting there and I had, I'm like, I have nothing to draw. So those, those, uh, these blob things are blobs on the other side that I've drawn. So anyway, so I don't know why I went in the middle of the sketchbook to do this, but I started drawing my foot, my left foot, just to be clear, you know, I'm, and this is the day after I, or the day before I drew the man. And I'm like, my little toe doesn't show. And I'm, I don't know why I wrote that, but I think it's hilarious because I didn't want someone to think that I only had four toes. I think that's funny. Does anybody else think that's funny? I just think that that's silly and weird, but I didn't want somebody to think I only had four toes. I have five toes. Okay. Um, thanks, Hannah. I appreciate it. And observation skills absolutely are just important as it's the way we see and it's being able to see things flat, right? And And when it's dark, I'm not so... I can't even see my paper super great, you know, like, I mean, there's the light of the TV and we have one lamp, um, but it's on the other side of the room. So I am kind of, it's not the best. Here's another one. I don't know why. I think these were rocks, but then I looked at it and I was like, it looks more like a poop pile. But then this is like a little sketch. I didn't think it went anywhere. This was a little sketch. I really like these like rocks that are connected. I don't know. I draw those a lot sometimes. And then this was maybe a little sketch again, thinking about composition and making things simpler, but then busy. I think this was like an onion, clearly not a good one. Um, and then I liked this bird and then this onion. I think we were watching um, Hell on Wheels, which is like about when the railroad was going west. Um, I thought this this was like a, maybe lips or maybe it was onion. And then I, anyway, so sometimes I have these um, yeah, my poop pile stole my little toe for sure. Yes. Um, but it's like, then I just add, this is just something that was in the show we were watching, you know, like they're doing something with the railroad or something. And I'm like, okay. I mean, the bird was not in the show at all, but I'm like, okay, well, whatever. And sometimes I'll add water to it or turn my page or, or my book. And sometimes I have these two color things going, right? And then this, I, we were watching something else. I don't remember what it was. It wasn't, it was after uh, Hell on Wheels. And I don't know why it was like a fork maybe. And then um, maybe it was a commercial. And it was like, uh, maybe this was supposed to be a, a 
tulip or something and this was the petals, but then it looked like a spatula. And so then, I mean, this is like waves in a boat and it was terrible. But, and then I just kept going because I'm distracted. I'm watching TV. I'm not so perfect. I'm not trying to be so perfect about things. So it's like things that don't match, you know, like a boat in her hair and a tulip spatula and, you know, and then it's uh, this, this color orange stuff was a um, water soluble. So I put some water to it. I like this page. I think it's weird, but I like it. Again, it's, it's, I'm distracted. These were like me trying to really quickly draw a face or draw something just to doodle. And then I did this and then I made this, right? And then I, I did this and then I drew this. It looked like a huge stick in his eye. And then um, this one, I don't, oh, I guess this one is that guy. I thought that looked sort of like an arm. I don't know. And then this became this guy. So it was just like a little exercise on, I wasn't trying to do anything. And then I ended up, was able to see something in just these. It's sort of like the blob, but indifferent. I thought, oh, what are different things that a heart could be? I thought it looked like a dragon or I don't know. Who knows? And then this lady is creepy, but I remember what show we were watching. It was like a movie and it wasn't very good. And she had like really big lips. She wasn't yellow like this, but then this is like the C from a Land's End catalog. I was like, I'm going to make that her dress. And then, I mean, not a very pretty lady. Um, she, she was much prettier on TV, I, I think. But I was just like, how can I exaggerate things? You know, just again, having fun because I'm not taking myself too seriously because I'm distracted. And I always have my sketchbook close by. I do tend, that was one of my challenges this to myself this summer is to get out of the sketchbook, which you'll see, I think I've done okay on doing. Um, and then because for me, the sketchbook is always close by so that I can explore. And I always have some tools with me that I can do stuff. So these are some that I did a little bit later in the summer. So the beginning of August, I started going on Map Crunch. Have you guys heard of this? Mapcrunch.com com maybe i don't know somebody could look it up maybe but um i'll try to find it and put it in the you know stuff underneath if you're watching on youtube but you can go anywhere in the world you can say if you want urban or you want like a um and this girl that i follow on youtube who i cannot think of her name right this second she does this and i was like okay i'm gonna try this i'm not good at perspective like Hmm, we'll see. And then there were all these boxes of drinks. And then I was like, well, I'm just going to add a little bit of color. I think I limited my palette a little bit. And I was like, okay. And then I ha get this magazine called Arizona Highways. And I love this magazine. And I've loved it since high school. And my friend Kara is from Arizona. And she gives me the subscription to that. And they have just amazing photography. And this little bird, this vermilion, it only has one L, flycatcher was in there. And I, so I used different colors and then they were all water soluble. So I did that. And then I've made a sticker out of this. I really like him. He is, has a lot of attitude to me, I think. And then these are two that I did last, last week at my parents' house. This was just from my, the C one is just from my head. So maybe not so good. And then this one, not so good, not, not so good. It is uh, from Arizona. I just looked on iStock photo. I think I just you know, like a landscape. And I realized what it is just too, there's too much detail. It's too, I needed to just do some washes. And so again, now I'm able to see how I can improve instead of being so ashamed of this or letting it stop me from trying again. Um, I can see some things that I like, and this is very small. Like this is huge. You're seeing it. Oh, it is a little, hmm. but I'm like, okay, I need to try it again with just washes down here instead of so much having to be so detailed. Maybe the detail stuff could be back here. Again, now I'm not so ashamed, I guess. So one thing I've done is I now am trying to give things, give ideas, give a landscape or give a, a composition time to marinate. So I'm executing, I'm executing, and then I'm revising. So this piece, sometimes this was in another little sketchbook. We did a like a 30 day challenge in most, a lot of these that I'm showing, they were in this. So this is very small, you know, but it, for a long time, it was just the background. 
and it wasn't there wasn't any of the white marks there wasn't this blue this dark line here and there definitely wasn't this flower and i ended up sort of auditioning um i learned from this lady adele cyberson i don't know how to say her last name it's kind of a weird last name but i think she's in louisiana and i love this lady this lady i can't wait i hope i, I get to have her on the show i've asked her but she hadn't responded to my email but maybe um but she holds these things up, and this is a free video. I'll try to link it also. Um, but she holds, she draws things that she tends to draw on pieces of acetate. And then she holds it up to her, up to her work and says, okay, well, could I try this? Does this look good here? Does this look good? And so I do a lot of these flowers. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to try this flower. And I really liked it. I was like, okay. So I just put it on. Obviously, you have to still redraw the thing, but I really, really, really liked this auditioning things. So again, I'm learning from people. This, uh, Tara and I, when I was in Colorado, we watched Claire uh, Bremer, Bremner, and she's on Skillshare. She has a lot of Skillshare classes, but this was like gouache landscapes. And she does, gouache is great for sketchbooks because they don't stick together and they dry pretty quickly. It's it's like watercolor, but opaque. And so she, I just was going through, I was doing her class. I had already watched it. I'd probably already watched it twice. So now I have the iPad on my big uh, drafting table at home, my art table. And then I um, I'm listening to what she's saying and I'm pausing it when I need to, but she did, she's like, and I had a photo that I was looking at and then I, but I changed some things, right? So this one, I had two mountains. This one, I had a little tree or like a little small tree and then a bigger tree. And then this bush, cause the bush was in it. The bush made it in all three, but it didn't make it in all mine. The, the, the little tree was on the left here and the big tree was on the right and there were no mountains. Anyway, so here were some things that Claire had said that I took to heart. And I'm like, okay, I have to write these down because I'm having trouble. So she worked in a split complementary uh, color palette. So that meant I was going to do blue back here because all of this stuff was kind of orange in this photo. This was like a photo from Tennessee and it was like a sun going down kind of, or sunset sort of look. Anyway, so I was going to do more orange in the foreground and means that I need blue in the background to give depth. Again, I'm just writing things. She did. She was working with yellow and purple, but, you know, orange and blue are split complementary and War Eagle, Amy Lyons, right? Um, so then I did um, work from the top down. So I was going to do my washes from the top down and then from the furthest away to the closest. So I was going to work on... Um, like in this one, I would work on the stuff in the background and then maybe this tree was closer or, and this was the closest. And then there was some stuff up front. So, okay, here we go. So this is the first one. Now I was looking at nothing on this one and this is terrible. I get it. I know. But I was like, okay, I was being adventurous on my purple, adding the purple in. I had at one point, I think I used this as one of my, um, so I stuck with this color palette because I was trying, I am still trying to work in this color palette for this, for a number of days because I, maybe I'm not as good at it, but this probably, this was not me watching Claire. This was before I was like, I did this and I was like, man, I got to watch that video again. Cause I don't think I'm doing it right. I ended up cause it's gouache. I had this path coming down and I thought it was terrible. So I just eliminated it. Right. So here's the next one, man, it went on its own. So this is the first attempt, me looking at this, um, I can't remember the guy's name, but anyway, it was uh, he took a photo in Tennessee and then this, and again, these are sm so small. So then these fields didn't work. It was too much detail, like the little, but I kept seeing things that I needed to work on. What else did, what else wasn't working really? I did, this was kind of foggy back here. So maybe the color's right, but I was thinking, and I did have trouble in the next ones that you'll see, because I literally just did the same thing, tried just do the same thing over and over. But this back here, these trees, I was, they were kind of melding in with these trees and you couldn't really see the difference between them. And so I was like, okay, I'm having trouble with this. So this ended up being kind of flat. I like the colors, but it's a little flat. So again, the power of iterating. So now doing the same thing again, 
all I did, I had one big sheet. I just turned it over. I had them taped off. So again, tried a little bit different. This was like my second composition where you have the, they kind of look like boobs. I don't know. They're really too round for a mountain, I think. But you see where I'm struggling. Like I'm trying to make it dark back here and it's just not working. I mean, it's darker, but I tried the white. I tried like the sun was dappling in. I don't think I'm consistent on that, but there is definitely this foreground, then this middle ground, and then you see some of the other. So I feel like it's, I'm winning on that. I like the clouds okay on both of those, or, you know, the sky, but there's definitely some things that I like that I will incorporate in the future. I actually hated this bush. This bush just kept giving me trouble. So I was like, okay killing the bush. We're not doing the bush anymore. I think this one is the one I'm the pr proudest of. Here's what I love about this one. Even huge. I mean, I'm looking at it. It's like, this is like three times as big. I'm looking at it three times as big as what it normally is, you know? So anyway, but I like that the light is coming in and I like this color blue. I'm not sure this dark works. I don't think there's sky color like that. So I see, but I tried, remember the purple from the very first one. I was like, okay, I like the purple. I don't want it all over. And then one thing that Claire Bremner says, she's Australian artist, a uh, fine artist. She uses color. She makes sure she's using it in like the foreground, the midground, and the background. So she's kind of dappling it through, which I thought was really interesting um, of a technique. So I was like, okay, well, there's this midground. Um, and I was just kind of, Flapping it. This didn't work. This was like a fail. Fail. But the trees I thought were better. Yeah, I liked this one the best, I guess. And then I did this one. Tried to do it in a square format. I still. So I'm struggling with shadows. But I am not. I'm, I'm cringing a little bit looking at these with y'all a little bit, to be honest. But like, so the trees in the background, it looks a little weird. Um, I, I think I just... It just is too, I don't know. It's more like Seurat or, you know, Impressionist, which I like, but I think there's maybe too much orange or I don't know. It just wasn't, I wasn't able to get um, what I wanted. But again, it was just an exercise. I thought, okay, well, I'm not maybe going to do a square um, thing again. But I think I was, there's a little bit more, you know, depth here, but maybe it's just the, anyway. Line quality, I need to have wider line qualities. But here's the thing. I am working on two things at once most of the time. So I'm not in my head. So that distraction, what I'm doing there, instead of sitting in front of the TV in the dark, I'm distracting myself so I'm able to stop one and start doing another. I also did this all summer while I was working on websites. I would work on the website and then I would go to the bathroom and I come back and I'd paint something. So I'm sort of like solving a little bit of the website while I'm working at the art table. And then when I go over here, I'm not really thinking about the art, but then I, next time I go to the bathroom, I come back and I solve something at the art table. So it was really good that it worked like this. So here's another fail. I took my, my mom has a whole bunch of calendars. And so I took the old calendars, um, you know, like from 2020 or 2021. And I saw some things that I liked that I wanted to draw. And so this one, I realized it just got too dark. And so this is one I abandoned. So again, I was so worried in the beginning of the summer about wasting materials and wasting paper, wasting time doing this. I realized, oh, it's okay. You know, I just, I went, I, that was a decision I made to just take the tape off and let this one go. Like I maybe can do something with this later, you know, just, but it's just a piece of paper. I'm actually okay throwing this away, but I did scan it in just to show that, I mean, I do a pencil drawing, you know, really light. And then sometimes things don't work now is this is huge for me from where I was in the beginning of the summer. So to me, even showing this, that I threw this away or that I'm going to throw this away, this was a really big hurdle that I overcame. Like if that's all I overcame in the summer, like that to me is really good. So this is the end product. This was the, I mean, I worked on both. I was trying to work on these at the same time. So this one also was dark at some point, but 
So these were like lavender, I don't know what flowers these were, but it was a lot of orange. And this is where it's like, okay, well, this is where, see how these marks are bigger? I think that's what I needed to do. I needed to do bigger marks in the back and then some smaller, finer ones in the front. They're still big marks, but then I took put more. Again, with gouache, you're layering. So it's really in a mixing colors. It's just really good. So for me, avoiding my pitfalls, one of the things is I put in too much detail. So I decided, you know, on the back of a calendar, they have the tiny, tiny little images. So I was like, I'm not going to look at the front of the calendar or, or go to June or whatever it was I was drawing. I didn't even care what month I was drawing. You know what I'm talking about? I'm sorry, the picture's little, but like, this isn't one of them, but this is one of my mom's calendars from 2022. Uh, it didn't make the cut, I guess, to get on the wall. Um, but anyway, so I was like, I'm just going to look at this little picture. So this is tiny little picture. That was the, um, that worked for me in the, the Tennessee was also the back of a calendar. I was looking at that and I realized if I just look at the small thing, then I don't get so wrapped up in all of the details, which I thought, okay, Hey, I'm learning something, you know, I'm learning something about what works for me. So and I'm going to utilize gouache to its best ability, and I'm going to embrace the layers, right? Same thing with watercolor. Whatever the medium is, I'm going to embrace the layers. If not, I can always just make it a mixed media piece and put some collage on top of it. So this is one I'm most, like, I finished this on Sunday. So all of these, these ones from the Tennessee field, that was from not last, okay, not too I don't know how many days, four days ago, not that, that Saturday, but the Saturday before I did all of these, all those fields, all the fields, that um, other field with the mountain and the flowers, that one, and this one, all within the span of time when I was at my mom's and dad's uh, for my mom's surgery. But again, I was working during the day. I was grading and doing a whole bunch of stuff. I was helping my mom. So this is just stuff I was doing at night because I like to go to bed really early. And my mom had to stay up till 1130. So I had to make her a smoothie at 1130. And then she had to take her medicine before she went to bed, right? So I had to stay up. I had to do something that was going to make me stay up. And to me, making art gets me really excited and I can't really go to sleep. But I was really proud of this one. Now, this is, these were two trees kind of combined. They were different trees. But you, I, this, I did a wash behind there, but then it, I kind of went crazy a little bit. And so then I had to paint over. So again, embracing the layers of gouache. And then my husband was like, these are sunflowers. These don't look like sunflowers. And I was like, whatever, John, I was actually most proud of this. I had a hard time coming up with this like gravel road color. And cause it was a little bit of blue, you know, like where the shadows were. And I really like these grasses. So I feel like I got the foreground mid-ground background. And I felt like I, you know, things were darker in the front because the, the shadow, you know, and I felt like my trees were good. I overlapped my clouds. Like I was really, I don't really like this mark, but eh, oh well. But again, I was working really quickly. These are small. So they're not like I'm painting for days. Like I don't have that kind of time and I don't have that kind of uh, attention. So when my mom was in her surgery, I had pre-prepared, pre-prepared, I don't know, I had prepared, just, I was like, I'm going to need something to do in the waiting room that I can, um, that's creative, but that will keep me entertained and won't be so nervous that it will pass the time. So I just made a whole bunch of sheets of blobs in my sketchbook. So here's some, let me show you some that I really, um, light like um some of these were done before i really like this little sleeping dude down here um the fox i did which i don't know why i made him have a butthole but he would have a butthole i like this little guy there were are a lot of things with teeth you'll see because she had teeth surgery right so here we go let's go to the next one and now that one before was old and so I was trying to clean my palette. And, you know, at some point your palette's like gray and brown, right? Because all your colors are mixing. But I was like, okay, well, I'm going to go for it. I like this little guy um, a lot. Again, teeth. You'll see the teeth come start coming out, right? Um, the pencil mushroom. I don't know. Okay. I like this little family, this little brush man. I don't know. Um, 
And that guy with the teeth, yikes. Uh, okay, let's go to the next one. Again, um, I like these carrots. I thought those were fun. These, this girl, everybody's like, oh, her. I'm like, I do not like her, but okay. I loved these two guys. And then Skinny Santa. You see Skinny Santa? Now, granted, with blobs, you're turning it over and over. You're not just doing the same direction. Like that looked like a pheasant or something. I don't know. It looks like uh, fingers. Somewhere there's a man, a big man in a little bitty boat. Here we go. Let's see. Is the uh, You have to turn your head up for the big man with a little bitty boat. It's not a lot. Again, lots of teeth. And the quaff on that bear. Whoa. Anyway, here we go. I did make these blue. Look at this cutie. Isn't he just adorable? I loved him. And then I made a teapot. My mom couldn't drink hot things. So I was, I don't know what I was thinking here. Um, and then this is another smaller sketchbook. So that one I just did was not during the surgery. This is the one I did during the surgery. But I did that one um, that night when I was having to do something every 10 minutes or every 20 minutes for her. So again, scary teeth, man. Um, there's a little hat. This is the big man in the little bitty boat. Um, you know, you can see some things are just out of my imagination. They're not real. This fish is terrible over here. Who cares? Um, I like the little whale. I guess that's a, a boar or something. I don't even know what all these are, but this seems like rocks or a cave. This is like a tent. I don't know things are made up. Sometimes you just have to mine for the gold. You have to reflect on it later to see some of the beauty that is there. There are also a ton of acorns at my parents' house. These are like, okay, I'm just trying to see what I could get. Now, the acorns I know Debbie Clapper has in Cleveland are huge. My, our little acorns are tiny in the South. I mean, teeny tiny, right? So they sort of look like drums. And then I did this thing with Omar Wynn on Skillshare. And so I painted just kind of blobs of, or lemons or whatever. And then I, these were oak leaves from their, my parents' yard. And then I did bananas. The kiwis are terrible. I know that, but I'm okay. I mean, I honestly would have been so ashamed to show this in, in May, right? So I'm, I feel like this is huge for me. Like, I feel like I'm, I'm growing. These are uh, grapes. I'm having to tell you because I know that the leaves are too large. I mean, too small for a grape. The strawberries, this strawberry is pretty good. I like the um, watermelon. And then these were the two that I did. Well, I did the pear second, the blueberries third. Um, I did tomatoes. I don't know why I didn't include the tomatoes, but because they're my favorite. Um, I mean, tomatoes are my favorite. The drawings of the tomatoes are not my favorite. I probably like the blueberries the best. So I also decided to think about what's worked. And I would go back and look at some of the work that I had made in the summer and see what worked and what didn't. And this has also been a really big eye-opener for me about what I was able to do. So again, repeating, not retreating, because that's what I normally would do if I didn't made something ugly or I felt like I was wasting something, I'd just retreat for forever. So to me, the biggest mindset hurdle, and maybe I already shared this with you, in this series was that I was just giving myself permission to be imperfect because I'm not perfect and none of us are. But if we're going to get better, we have to actually practice daily. So here was one that I did early. So I was working with a limited color palette. I was working with some found like a book and then um, just some so collaged uh, things together and then scra uh, scraping things in. Um, so this was maybe in May or June. This is, again, I did the backgrounds and then I auditioned some things that I regularly kind of draw and then put them on top. So I auditioned these things before I put them on and then I auditioned. I really liked these. These were ones that I was pretty proud of. I think they work as a set, but they're also, um, I use different materials. I don't think they're perfect, but I'm I'm proud of these. And these are pretty small. These are like, this one may be five by seven. And this one's probably four by four. I mean, it's small. And then I really like these. So when I went to Colorado, Tara and I would do plein air and we'd go and paint and draw. Um, and then some days we just stayed at home and we did this or we would do this in the afternoon. And so we use jelly plates. If you don't know what a jelly plate is, it's just like a 
clear thing. Maybe I'll show a video on how to do that, but you, you have to work in layers and you have to let things dry you. And then I would draw on top of, so these are still multiple layers and I would use masks. So I had cut out some things from, you can do construction paper, but I think we used acetate that we just cut into circles or into shapes. And then I just drew this with my, that fine line. Um, it's like a, what my frisket comes in, um, but I just put ink in it. And this I did with a pen, but this I did with the frisket. And so I just really like these. This one's probably the one I'm, the one on the left is the, probably the one I like the most. I think it could be a, you know, like a, uh, shower curtain or something. So maybe you and me, maybe we all need to take time to reflect monthly or quarterly. Instead of Xing something out of our sketchbook, maybe we need to say, you know, once every three months, we're going to go back through the drawings that we've made this year. Even if it's just the, or the paintings, just see how much we've grown and see what we've gotten better at. Again, over here on the left or on the right is something from the jelly printing, this was a lot of layers. And then I drew with like a Posca pen, like a cream Posca pen, this thing that was in my friend Debbie Mock's yard, this like plant. And then I got, I draw these a lot in my sketchbook. So I just kind of auditioned some of these. This is in my other sketchbook. And so this was not anything that I was going to be framing or anything like that. These are just kind of explorations in my sketchbook or on a piece of paper. So, cause it's hard to do the jelly printing on a sketchbook. So this was the card that I made for my dad for, for his birthday or father's day. Anyway, it's all in June, I think. And so, I mean, I know his birthday's in June. So it's, uh, they all kind of run together a little bit for me, but I use silver paint. And why I wanted to show this was this started from a bookmark series that I, the CC creations, C-E-E, -E, C -E -E, C-E-E creations on YouTube, love her. Uh, I think she's Canadian. She does a lot of watercolor. And so I just did her exercise. I made these bookmarks and then I decided, hey, I like this. She didn't have like ferns like this, but she had like whatever these flowers are and she would use like a pen to do this. She didn't, maybe she did. She uses a lot of metallic, but she didn't paint rocks, you know? So I added my own stuff. So then for my dad, I did her thing. Like she had these little vases and then she would, Put the stuff and I was like, okay, I'm going to do rocks, a rock Karen for my dad and have some um, ferns and these plants growing out of it. And I, and you can really see the silver in this photo. And that's what it is, silver watercolor paint. And I really like this card and my dad put it on the shelf. Yay. Okay. So here's a fun part. We'll make this um, <laughs> uh, interactive maybe. I know it's almost time to go. We have 10 minutes. So what do you see? And don't say the more, because that's all I see now. This is tiny, tiny, tiny. This is my cutting mat, my helix mat. Anybody? All I see is a robot. Let me show you. Here's his robot. There would be another. I would put a little eye here. And then this some sort of robot top thing. And then I would put something else, you know, next to the robot. And then what do you, if you already know this answer, don't um, write this. But what, now I'm sorry, it's so bit mapped. Mm. It is from a screenshot from a Lucy DeClou. DeClou? Mm, she's Canadian also. She's a, she does a lot of mixed media on Skillshare. Loved her for ages. She does a lot of collage. Love her stuff. Love her stuff. This is from her. She just put, put stuff on the wall. But I saw that. Don't y'all see that? Running milkshake? Don't you see it? Anyway, that's all I saw. So... I just find faces. Again, sometimes I have to make blobs because I don't feel like I can do anything else. So don't be afraid to do little things. So when in doubt, catalog or get a magazine out. Now I'm going to show you what I've done. So this is a wave. Oh no, this is that all modern catalog. I just made a very three little lines. I made a happy a uh, bench over here. I feel like this guy's Irish, uh, Adrian, just so you know, I feel like it was like a little bowler hat. I don't know why I thought he was Irish, but that he is, that's what I'm saying. Um, so I'm glad you're here. So I just gave, this was like the thing you open, I guess. Well, I just gave it another one. And then I don't know why he has buck teeth, but he has his mouth open, right? And he has big teeth. Then I love this girl. This is like a chocolate ice cream scoop, right? But all I could see were these awesome lips this girl had. And then 
I maybe accentuated her eyes a little bit, the dark little parts. And then I was like, that looks like hair. And then it looks like she's got little buns back here, you know, and there's her little nose. And I just loved it. So here's the whole thing. Well, not the whole thing. I did make another face with this. This is, I think, the Wayfair count. Maybe it was the All Modern, too. Anyway, but again, it's just something all I added were the eyelashes and the smile. Maybe you can do this. So what would you add to this? Or what do you see? Since nobody's telling me, I'm going to sh- tell you what I've made some people do this. And they've said it looks like a pig right? There's an eye and this, and then people have said um, they see like a robot and this is the eyes. That's kind of what I see too. Um, But maybe you're just looking at something and seeing something else. So in this, sometimes, you know, in a magazine, they'll have the article has this picture, the big image, but then there's the little image and the table of contents. And I really liked, I just made her have a little hat, you know, again, two circles and a half circle, right? For the earth for the smile. We can do this. Okay. So this one is probably my favorite. And I did this in May. Um, This was the all modern catalog. And I totally just as an exercise, I cataloged. This is what I I just couldn't think of anything. And you'll see kind of what I'm doing this, this uh, surfboard. I just, you flip it upside down and this was like the nose. Of course, it kind of looks like it's like this too, but I flipped it the, it upside down and then that was her lips and that was her nose and these were her eyelashes and then um, I made like a little weird plant person that was looking up at us but then this one is the thing that I want to show you so all I could see I didn't see anything the first time I looked at it but then I did this and I'm this is the mo- I'm the most proud of this one it's lips don't you see it see the lips now and these are teeth Holy moly. And that's like broccoli in the teeth, right? Nobody, nobody's commenting. Okay. I know somebody's probably like, how can she talk this long without breathing? Anyway, I'm breathing. So this was a, in that same catalog. Um, thank you, Amy. Um, the, I just gave it, I thought it was sleeping. And then, you know, like you're slobbering or something. It was like, its tongue was coming out. I just thought it totally looked like a sleeping chair, right? And then, okay, what would, I showed this to my mom and my mom was like, I don't know. I'm like, what do you see? I'm like, I totally, I didn't draw anything on this one, right? But I totally see this as the eyes and they're closed. And I don't know if this is like eyelashes or eyebrows, but then this is either a tiny little beak or this is the whole beak thing. I can see it as like a little bird and this is the tiny little beak, or I could see this as like the nose kind of thing. Anyway, I think maybe we all just need to look at a catalog. I mean, this one I showed my sister. She's like, I don't know, because sometimes people can only see that it's a sink, but we have this thing that we've been gifted. And I saw eyes, nose, and this, see the mouth? His mouth's open. All I need is a couple of teeth here, maybe some teeth inside here, right? So I just think we need to use our imagination more. I mean, what if we did something like that for our clients or just for ourselves, just to stretch that because we don't get to stretch that muscle that much. I may have shown this one before. I, in my other office, I had spray, but I had dropped like some printmaking ink and this got made on the wall. And so then I never over, like I never put a bookcase over in front of it. And it was small. It's probably like, three inches in like this big, very small. But I think it looks like the neighborhood watch guy, you know, on the, in America, we have these signs and it's like, there's a neighborhood watch in this um, neighborhood. Don't come around stealing. And the guy has like a beret and he looks like a little evil um, and you don't see him, but see his little shoes and his hands are in his pockets, right? He's all anyway, nobody again. Okay. Um, So what do you see with this? I have a lot of beret people. Here we go. So I'm going to show you what I did. But again, I have this as an exercise, right? This is, you could turn it over and see something. I think somebody has seen this as a whale tail, right? Um, I saw a painter. So you can see it to the left. This is like, 
I don't know, maybe it's like the things on Easter Island or maybe it's just hills. I don't know. But I thought he has like a little paintbrush or his little painting with something and has his little beret on and I drew his little arm and his little leg or whatever and his little easel and stuff. And then these are just blobs that I just had a whole bunch of ink or, or gouache paint and I just folded the piece of paper or I pot plopped it down on another piece of paper and these blobs came and I I drew on top of these. Um, this is from a spill you know, outside, it's probably Coke or who knows, somebody dropped their lunch or something. But I see like a, maybe it's a spider or it's a, a woman with a crazy dress or something. I don't know. But this is kind of where it started. This was back in 2017. And I went through this magazine. I think it was, maybe it was, maybe it was 2018. But I would just draw on catalogs. I didn't remember that I did this. I was going through old magazines out this summer or maybe in this in uh I don't know when sometime March to whenever and I was like oh I do that I actually because again it's dark in the room I'm in and obviously I don't have good memory I do but I don't know why I couldn't think of this anyway I was like I like this so I went down to the bottom because there was another piece that that was like this thing and I was like it's cute is number six and number whatever uh, are they number one and number six? Are they by the same shades of flight? Okay, number six. Um, for it, wholesale flowers and supplies.com. These aren't even the same things. Who made these? And then I realized I drew on top of them. I liked the thing that I had made, which I, again, feels a little bit like, I can't believe I'm saying this out loud, right? It's totally not humble. But I was like, I like that simple style. So I was like, why can't I draw like that? Why don't I draw like that more? And so I think I just, oh, it was 2018, right? I mean, hello. Anyway, I just think we need to do things. So uh, another one, a uh, awesome catalog to get that's free. Maybe not for you, Adrian, all the way in Ireland, but maybe they have something like that. It's Wayfair, Wayfair catalog, right? And Ovens and vent hoods. Now, here's some ovens. I have done this. Now, ovens come in other things. You know, sometimes it'll be in a kitchen scene of a magazine, whatever. But I love ovens. And I'm going to show you what I did. One time, John Ingalls um, had a birthday. Not that he doesn't have a birthday all the time, right? But it was his birthday and I had just made this. And I was like, I'm going to make this. I'll send this to you as your card. So I made my own um, I used some silver tape and I gave him buck teeth and then I gave him pants and his legs kept falling off. So I'm sure they're not anyway, but that I, it was just cutouts, just cutouts. Maybe you make your own person. Obviously everything here is just white piece of paper, you know, tape. This is pattern paper. And then I made dirty knees, but so just maybe you go to ovens and vent hoods. I see a lot of things in the ovens and the vent hoods. The vent hoods to me are just as powerful. Like I see, see those look like two eyes and this is two big teeth. Um, maybe this is just a nose and it's like an elephant. Maybe his eyes there and then on the other side, but we don't see it. Anyway, I just think you need to play. So what do you see here? And don't say my legs. Yes. Anybody? I think I've made Debbie Clapper do this one because I have it right beside my, um, uh, yes, I see pants. I see like leggings. Do you know what it is, Amy Hassenjager? It is a letter A, the top part of a letter A, right? Yeah. So we could take and blow up type, abstract it, right? We have the stuff at our fingertips. So me and D Ingles are going to do this at some point. We're going to do plant hair Paula and Paula's going to have some more friends. And Paula's here in the middle. She has plant hair. And then I drew her head and a little bit of hair in the back, right? There's Paula. And I don't know what this lady's name is, but this, don't you see this one on the right? It doesn't look like a guy punk person, you know, like they're, I don't know, they're 80s rock, you know, like Poison is their favorite band or something. Can you see? Like all I need is a face, right? And some like kick-ass, really dark black mascara or whatever that's, whatever. The liner, eyeliner. All right, I do bowls of skirts. Again, I am cutting up some magazines. 
I totally, I just took somebody's legs from something else. And then this was a bowl that was on a table, like some pretty bowl. Well, it made a skirt. I made it into a skirt. This one, not so good. I mean, really awkward with the legs. <laughs> oh, well, um, you know, we're not all perfect. And I do circle punches. I have big circle punches. I don't know if anybody knows that season. Anyway, I, um, and then I make, um, I make people like this person's obviously balding, but it's just really eyebrows, right? Um, this is like, she's wearing a hijab, which I thought was, I think I this one. And then there's, you know, that lady and then this little girl's cute. And then it's just people's hair, you know, in photos and in magazines. And then I just kind of, you know, put it on and cut it out. And then I do it with other shapes as well. I thought this looked like maybe a very scary uh, lady with a bun with really dark hair. And it has, she has all these eyes. Isn't that creepy? And then look, this one looks like this. She had lots of teeth. I'm not sure about the French fry one, but I like it. And this looks like some monk from, um, you know, the 1400s. That's just, you know, they had terrible haircuts, you know, and just put some eyes. He had a, a little bit of a water spill on top of him. Anyway, I thought that was a good idea. Again, still nobody. Oh, and just to say, I don't see things correctly all the time. Now, this obviously is from White Barn and you see what the name is, but this is a beautiful packaging. It had this gold fleck. This is at my chiropractor's. Okay, she gave it to me because of what I saw. She was like, I want you to have the rest of this soap. So she, oh, they almost used it all. And I was like, oh, I picked it up, you know, went to the bathroom because I have a tiny bladder. I always have to go. So I go and I, um, I'm like, oh, flannel, <laughs> flannel. That's what I said, flannel. Okay, because that's what the packaging felt like. It's flannel. It's not flannel. What the heck was I thinking? They should have named it something else because I don't think that this packaging goes with flannel. It looks like flannel. So I was like, oh, like Chanel, flannel, you know? So I thought it was so funny. I caught myself before I even left the bathroom knowing that, um, yeah, I think the packaging reflects my version too. Thank you, D. So I show, I said, you know, the, um, the soap in the bathroom to uh, Dr. Jessica. And she's like, yeah, I said, you know what it's called? And she's like, uh, no, I don't remember maybe. And I said, it's called flannel, but you know what I wrote? I went and got it. And I was like, this looks like flannel. And she busted laughing. I thought it was, I, it was funny. It's funny. And so then she, when it was finished, there's still maybe a little in there at this point. I think I have it over there because I teach this as a packaging. The name doesn't reflect what it was. Anyway, the end. I just wanted to end with at least one funny thing so that you had something that you stayed for extra five minutes for the flannel thing. If you need me, that's how to get me. You can get me on WhatsApp or iMessage. I'm Creatives Ignite anywhere else. And that's my email, Diane at creativesignite.com. And next week, I have my friend Pippa from the UK. She's a photographer. For the rest of the year, we're talking about process. We're talking about how people get their ideas and how they make it happen. I can't tell, um, tell you how excited I am to get this stuff together, um, to ask all these people some of the same questions about their process because we all do things differently and Maybe if somebody, if we get to see somebody else's, we can try that out and see. And um, uh, my friend Sandy, she's gonna, she's a painter and she's doing things differently. But I think there's stuff that we could use if we look at more painters, if we look at more other people doing different things. Maybe we can break things apart and do things. I mean, break things down, not break things apart. Uh, break things down and do things differently and, and it'll help our own practice. I know that for me, seeing how other people work has helped or seeing what tools they use or how they use the tools because they're using them differently than the way I'm using them. So I'm really excited and just thank you for being a part of this. Thank you for being patient with me all summer and for me not doing camp. Hopefully you understand. I just really, 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 really needed a break and I, I, took it. I totally took the time and I'm still using my time to make sure that I'm um, having that 
time of rest during um during the day uh during the week during the month i'm not just grinding all the way through i know that there are times where we have to do that where i've had to do that but i just really am excited to see how other people do and that they're not struggling and that they're still able to have time where they work and they work really hard and focus. And then there's time where they're able to rest. And I guess we just all need to find what if what it is that re invigorates us. So I'm excited. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for just being here with me on this and for watching these. It feels very um narcissistic a little bit um to have all of that stuff but i i would i can't wait to see what other people's processes are and i can't wait to it really does it really does help me to see how people grow and the iteration amy hasenjager has painted a lemon four lemons now i think i haven't seen the most recent because i think you did it around the time i was doing this um to date, but there has been a huge amount of growth and changes she's made. And I'm able to see it because she's sharing it with me. And so I think, you know, maybe it it's it's not just a vacuum. I do think it's just better when we do it together. So I can't wait. If you have a video or if you've made something or you do a sketchbook tour, I'd love, send me a link. I totally would love that. Diane at creativesignite.com is the best way. Um, or you can text me, which I already gave that. So um, I am excited. I am happy to be back. And and we've got people booked up for October. So you won't have to see me alone. Um, but I do appreciate you, that you guys were warm and welcoming for seeing this part of my story. So there's always more. I mean, there's a bag full of stuff, right? I've done a lot. And I'm really proud of it. I'm proud of all the messes and all the eeks. I don't even know if I showed that. Let me show you this. I know where it is. It's right on top. Now, this is a terrible, I feel like I have to compress it. It's okay. So here it is. These are the eeks. This is the dad eek and this is the son. And he's just wants to get home and he just keeps talking. This is, I guess, how they communicate. And then I don't know why I included this uh, bird. But okay, he doesn't really go and he has a mohawk. But here's the thing. I really like the eeks. I don't like this. But, and I know you can't really see it super good because of the glare from the window. But I like this part. So forget the bird. Forget little Leroy the bird. But there is, now it's focusing. There's some really nice stuff that's in the background. So out of this piece, I saw things. And look, it's gold. Woohoo! Anyway, I like these and these I hated when, but I kept going, even though I knew it wasn't going to make sense. I just kept going and I didn't give up. And to me, that was huge because normally I would be like, this is, this is terrible. you know, but I didn't. So I was really proud and maybe mixed media isn't my thing, but I like the eeks. That's what I'm calling them. E-E-K-S. The end. Have a great day. All the links are down below. I'm sure I'll do another one of these sometime. And you can follow me on Creatives Ignite. Hit like and subscribe if you're, you can always come to a live show. The end.